Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video will be discussing example 5.1 from AC analysis uh, from Mr. Bolstad's book of electronic devices and circuits. Okay, let me explain a very uh, simple concept that I follow or remember. Whenever we talk of an amplifier circuit, etc., then there are two things. One we call is the DC bias, and the other is called the AC signal. The concept I build is that DC bias is like a stage. You can increase the DC bias, and the stage will be higher or lower. And the AC signal uh, is the signal which is performing actually. Now, if we have to just test or they do the rehearsal of this this couple then we don't need a stage it can be done on a floor so similar when we are doing ac analysis we don't need a stage that means we don't need dc bias and so comes this uh, explanation because we are interested only in the ac response of the circuit all the dc supplies can be replaced by zero potential equivalent or short circuit. But let's see. If this is our circuit, it has the DC supply or the VCC, then what we will do will make it equal to zero or make it grounded. So this, this terminals are now grounded. So that is the first step. The second step we do is in addition, the coupling capacitors C1, C2, and bypass capacitor C3 replaced by short circuit. Now these capacitors are called coupling width. This is this is coupling this input to the circuit. Similarly, the output of the circuit will be coupled to the next stage if there is any. So it is coupling capacitor. And this capacitor is to bypass the resistor. Sometimes we we need to bypass the uh, signal so we use this capacitor called bypass capacitor now what is the effect of this when we short circuit so we have short circuited here we have short circuited here but here there are two phenomena one we short circuited this capacitor but the moment we short circuited this resistance is also got short circuited so our uh, circuit now will look like this everything short circuited in the emitter so this is the circuit that we will be uh, following this uh, for the ac analysis okay another point that whenever we uh, have a transistor um, circuit we can we can use what is known as two uh, two port network concept that is, this is a box, black box. We have transistor in it. We have an input signal whose positive is at the top. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there's an output signal whose positive is also at the top. The, the in, in looking inside the circuit from left side, we get the impedance ZI. And looking inside from the outside, is we get the impedance ZO. Current entering is I1, and the current also entering from the output side is IO. So we keep this direction in mind. And now uh, to the our circuit, we can further draw it like this, and this are now parallel. So we can draw one resistor, which is R1, R2. The collector resistor can be drawn like this, and the output voltage as shown here. Output voltage from ground to this point or from this ground to this point is same. So this is the transistor small signal equivalent circuit. We'll see further. Now there is a model called RE transistor model, and that we'll discuss for common emitter configuration. So this is the transistor in common emitter mode. Emitter is grounded. That is why it's called common emitter. And this is input voltage, which is also equal to VBE, that is the base emitter voltage. We can further 
destroy it or simplify it by knowing that base emitter is nothing but a diode. So we replace that by a diode and the current IE uh, through the diode and IC is coming from the top which is the collector current. So we can further now uh, draw it or further equivalent circuit will be that the collector current can be replaced by a current source IC which is actually equal to beta times IB. We know IC is equal to beta times IB so we replace mm -hmm. this. Further simplification is that we replace the diode by its equivalent resistance. So the diode is replaced by an equivalent resistance, we call it RE. So this is the RE model. And what is RE? Basically, we have learned in section 1.8 that the diode resistance called RD is 26 millivolt divided by the diode current. Now in this scenario, the diode is connected in the emitter and that is where the resistance is called now RE instead of RD. And the current to diode is, this is the I emitter diode current, so it will be IE. So this equation we can modify and we call it RE is equal to 26 millivolt divided by IE, the emitter current. Now remember this I capital E means we are only will be using DC value of the emitter current. Okay, now from this circuit we will calculate a couple of things. First is the input impedance Z1 and from here you can see this is VB and this is the current through this. So VB voltage divided by current will be Z i, this is Z i, and V i is actually V B e, so we'll write V B e over I b, and V B e from here you can see V B e, this voltage is I e r e, so I e r e, and further I e can be written as I b plus I c, so the this emitter current is I c plus IB and IC we saw from here is actually beta times IB so we replace IC by beta times IB. Now taking common IB we get beta plus 1 IB RE. So now we coming back to this equation we put the value of VBE which was from here IB IB gets cancelled. So ZI will be beta plus 1 RE. And since beta is a larger value, almost 100 or 200, so plus 1 is negligible. So we can write it approximately equal to beta times RE. So we'll use this formula uh, for calculating the input impedance. And the circuit will also modify accordingly. Now you can see that the input impedance is beta RE. So we can replace this or we can divide this into two parts. We call this beta RE the input impedance and the output side we have the current uh, beta IB or IC. Now the output there is a, a very high impedance we uh, in the transistor. So we'll incorporate that. That is called output impedance RO. So this will be our common emitter transistor configuration in RE model. Okay, now we come to the question for the network of figure. Now you can see this is the common emitter mode. Emitter is connected to ground. And we have to calculate these five parameters. We will deal them uh, one by one. The, the first thing is determine RE. Now re recall that for RE the formula was 26 MV divided by I capital E. That means we have to get the value of IE from the DC circuit. So we are keeping the uh, DC voltage. This was the formula 26 millivolt divided by IE DC value. And how do I find IE? We know the formula of IE is equal to 
beta plus 1 ib and now how do we find ib so let's redraw this circuit uh, with, by showing the current this current is the ib current so we can use this loop to calculate ib you can use kva equation or you can use write directly from here that means vcc is equal to ibrv plus vbe ibrv plus vbe and from here we can find ib to be vcc minus ve divided by rb so this way we'll calculate ib so let's start first of all we calculate ib vcc is 12 from here vbe is always 0 0.7 volt and the resistance rb is 470 kilo so ib is 24.04 micro ampere IB found now we can find IB IE from here. So IE is beta plus one IB beta is hundred and one then hundred and one. This is given beta is given here hundred and IB so IE is two point four to eight milliampere and now we can find RE. So RE is twenty six millivolt over IB twenty six millivolt over this value. So it is 10.71 ohm. So this is the first part. So we have determined the value of Re. Now the second part is find Zi with Ro approximately or Ro equal to infinity. So now we have to go to the AC model. As we had told that we uh, ground the, uh, remove the battery and ground it. We have grounded it, removed the diodes, uh, sorry, capacitors. So this is the remaining circuit. And from here, we need to find Zi. We replace this one with the equivalent RE model circuit. This uh, resistor at the input or the RB resistor comes here, grounded. And similarly, the collector resistor RC is also shown here or connected with this circuit so from this circuit now we need to find zi and you can see zi is we are looking from here so it is basically rv and bre in parallel so you can say that zi is rv parallel bre now what is the value of bre we have to calculate we had already calculated re we know b to be 100 re we had calculated this value so bre will be 100 times re so this is bre and now we can find the parallel the zi is rb parallel beta re rb is 470 and this one is 1.071 so solving in parallel zi is 1.07 kilo ohm so that I is done in this uh, in this calculation. There is no role of R O, so uh, it is uh, uh, we are not considering what is the value of R O. But then in the next question it will be there. Now we are going to calculate Z O. That is the output impedance. And again, if you look from here, this is the parallel of these two, R C and R O. Okay, so Z out is R O parallel R C. And so in parallel, we solve it like this. And now when R O is infinity, that means this term will be equal to R O. So R O plus R C will be approximately equal to R O because R O is very large. So putting or replacing this with R O and then canceling R O R O. So we get R C as the value of output impedance and we'll now use the value 3 kilo so this is the answer of the second part of uh, third part part c okay and the uh, part d uh, is to determine the voltage gain av uh, with this this condition so we know voltage gain is output over input and now here, first of all, let's calculate the output. So output will be what? These two in parallel and this current is flowing. 
of the convention we had uh, earlier discussed that it will be positive at the top and negative at the bottom. But this current is touching the lower end, that means the lower end will be positive. So uh, to, to, uh, uh, to have this uh, effect of current entering through the lower end, we'll write VO with a negative sign. So VO is negative current beta IB multiplied by these two in parallel, so RC and RO in parallel. Now IB is VI over beta IB. From here you can see IB, this is the current, and this voltage is uh, R, uh, uh, RB, uh, sorry, VI. So IB is VI divided by this resistance. So we'll plug in this value. In, in place of IB, so it will be here like this, and then beta beta cancels, so it will be VI, RE, RC, RO. Now VI will take to the left side to get the voltage gain, so the voltage gain will be negative, this parallel divided by RE. And now we can put the value to get the answer, okay, sorry. Uh, this we have done already that if it is uh, ROC is still equal to RC when RO is infinity. So we'll use same that RC, RO parallel will be equal to RC. So this is our gain. And now plugging in the value, RC is 3 kilo, RO is 10.71. Therefore, the gain is negative 280.11. So the four parts we have done, now the, the last part is saying repeat C part and D part, including RO to be 50 kilos. So earlier we had done it with RO to be infinity, and now he's giving a, a value that let's consider it with 50 kilo and see its effect. Compare the results. Okay, so we'll just same formula except that for R O now we'll have 50 kilo and solving this Z O will be 2.83. Now remember earlier we had found it to be equal to R C which was 3 kilo. So what has happened when we have found when we have incorporated a fixed value or a, a non-infinity value of R O, then our Z out has reduced from kilo to 2.83. Similarly, the gain part. Same, this was the formula we solved. And RCRO, now in this case, is 2.83. So we'll plug that here, REV now. So the gain is now negative 264.25 instead of negative 280. So this gain has also reduced because of the finite value of RO. I hope you have been able to follow this. Uh, please let me know through your comments. Thank you and share it with your friends and foes.